it's your boy Davidoff. Welcome back to another vlog. I've just been to the aquarium. There'll be a vlog for that. I don't know when. Who knows? Could be next week, could be the week after. But I just went to the aquarium this morning and I'm going to the zoo tomorrow. I'm going to put it both in one vlog. Uh, at some point, you'll see that vlog. But today, in the afternoon, I'm getting picked up at 1 pm. I'm going to the Pinnacles. This is something I didn't know much about. I didn't know anything about until uh, like two weeks ago when I was talking to Mark, uh, the guy who showed me around Perp two years ago. There's a vlog of that, by the way. Um, he told me about the Pinnacles. I'm just like, okay, I'll go look for a tour about this. And I found the perfect uh, time tour in the afternoon. It's a sunset tour with a barbecue and a, uh, just like Uluru last year, a wine and barbecue. So yeah, I thought, oh, that looked cool. Uh, before we do that as well, we go to other places. Uh, there's like a lookout place we can go to. Uh, there's wildflowers if there's if it's in season uh, there's a beach walk as well um you get nice views of the indian ocean from a certain area um and at the end as well when we because uh, we look at sand dunes there's sandboarding i am not sure if i'll do sandboarding the boards are provided i don't know if i'm i'm into that to be honest i've never been to any into any sort of boarding uh, so i might not do that but if i do uh, you'll see it but at least you know some people on the tour will do it uh, so there's sandboarding and um there's sand dunes to look at as well in the desert and uh, it gets quite cold at night so they said bring a jacket or something i just got my hawks jumper so i'm taking that but yeah i'm looking forward to it and at the end of it you see the actual pinnacles and you're having a sunset barbecue there and on top of that what i was going to say a bit earlier they provide a telescope because if it's in season you can see the rings of saturn apparently and maybe other planets i don't know i don't know if it's in season because they didn't specify in the description which season it is I could have emailed them about it, but I didn't. <laughs> I did email them yesterday. I said about it wasn't able to pick up time. Can you confirm it? Um, but yeah, that's all confirmed and everything. But I'm looking forward to it still. Um, I'm very excited. I read the whole description. I'm just like, everything here sounds interesting. Even the sandboarding, even if I don't do it. That that does sound like a fun thing to include. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to this tour and I hope uh, you guys enjoy it too. Again, we've, we've done three big tours. It's on Rot Nest or Rotty as uh, they like to call it in Australia. Um, we did uh, Wave Rock and now we're doing this. Three big day trips, all of them very different, uh, but it's all about the adventure. And uh, I look forward to sharing with you what I'm gonna do in New South Wales as well, because that's gonna be very exciting and that will, will be there eventually. I'm gonna get on my tour bus and uh, hopefully it's a fantastic tour and I'll be back late at night. Hopefully I edit the vlog as quickly as possible because I'll, I got an Optus Stadium tour tomorrow morning. So yeah, let's get there. Well, you just gotta come back and do it in bite size. Yeah, please. exactly right. Okay, so you've obviously texted. You know, you're not there. Oh, you're just going to walk around. Oh. Go barefoot, no hats, wear goggles. I don't have goggles. Don't put sun lotion on. I didn't do that. I did it earlier today. Um, I said, it's a hard thing to learn. He said, no, just sit on a piece of wood and you go down the hill, mate. It's a funny tour guide. Uh, yesterday I recorded the intro of the tour guide. You should have recorded today's one. It's so much funnier. Uh, yesterday was funny, but this guy is funny. He used to say the sand is not hot. It's fairly warm. And we're going up that. Canyon against all odds, and I don't have to pay Barrier Reef things I never thought I'd do, so this can't be anywhere near as bad as the Kings Canyon's uh, physical uh, <laughs> physical stuff aside. It doesn't look fun to climb though, apparently it's the hardest part, so we'll see. One person fell off.
awesome! I went back for seconds and I guess it was getting up there so hard. I don't know how people do it so easily. My legs were killing me. It just felt like a really good workout. Uh, just getting up there. I had to use the board the second time to dig into the sand. But yeah, it wasn't as scary as I thought. Like the initial fall was scary, like the initial slope. But once you start going down, it's pretty fun. The first time I kind of annoyed because you meant to keep your hands on the sand, but you're not trying to dig down too deep. Otherwise you're breaking. Then just I slowed down so much. Second time though, better. In other words, I need to lose weight. Yeah. On to the rest of the tour. Now, we've pretty much suspended all those, so and their depot is just at the beginning of town, so they need to. my GoPro to Australia just in case I do standboarding even though I didn't think I would I didn't even bring it along with me today I left it in my suitcase so I brought a GoPro for no reason like that's an extra extra weight to my backpack on flights I've not even used it unbelievable staying barefoot we're going for a paddle so this is gonna be fun Hangover Bay, this place is called. It's got nothing to do with being drunk, according to the uh, tour guide. Because of the reef, it's like a hungover reef. I don't even I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I should have started recording five seconds ago, I would have explained it. Right there, thinking, throw my jeans up quickly, let me just step back a bit, and then it just, the just comes in with my feet, and it's weird anyway. It's like two years ago, part two. That's enough for me. Water went down the root canals and fused the lime and uh, golden quartz and sand, a bit like how cement is concrete's made with cement and gravel. Uh, and they were formed, so they were formed around the old roots of the trees. So you'll notice when you're exploring, when you're looking around, there'll be some hollow centers. So a little bit like how a stalagmite stalactite forms. Uh, similar, you'll see the lines in them, you'll, you'll see seashells in them. Uh, but that's their go-to theory and it sort of makes sense. When you, if you go up onto the lookout, if you look out sort of straight ahead of us in the distance, you'll see the golden quartz sand stop, the yellow sand, and the white sand start again. This is the only area 
of where there's this yellow sand. Everywhere else we've been today has been that white lime sand. So they have only formed because of the combination of the two sands. I prefer to tell people they were formed by aliens, but apparently <laughs> I'm not allowed to miss some false information. You know, the fact checkers will get me. I mean, it has to be aliens. How else did this road get all these little rocks down the side? You can't tell me that's natural. Although we did have a lady one day, we drove in here, and you know how they say there's no such thing as a stupid question? Well, the first thing she said was, oh, that's natural. <laughs> so I think, you know, sometimes there is such a thing as a stupid question. <laughs> but yeah, so out in the distance, straight sort of ahead of us, slightly to the left, you'll see the white sand start again. So there's a lookout just up on the hill on the right hand side, I'll point it out in a minute. If you go up there and look out to that direction out there, you'll see where the golden port stops and the lime sand starts again. So where we, where we stop, we overlook the pinnacles and the ocean and the sunset. We've been stopping there for six years, so it's a good spot, trust me. Um, the false horizon. So you'll see any other tourists in here, they'll get in their cars and drive off once that sun drops below the horizon, but they're missing the best part of it. So yeah, we're gonna stop where we stop, and we'll be there all night, the door will be open, you can come and go as you please, you can leave your stuff on the bus if it's gonna be safe. We're gonna do the cooking and get all the chairs and blankets set up, the telescopes set up. Uh, and if you want to have a chance to see animals, I've got to be careful because when I say we won't see any in here, we normally run one over. Um, normally we don't see any in this area because, oh mate, I had an emu walk in front of me the other day. Um, and I've just gone, we don't see any animals in here. <laughs> so normally we don't see animals in here because people, they don't like people, so driving through this area. But the green ridge in front of us, where we park, go over that way. That's sort of the pinnacles off-road, if you know what I mean. There's no park, you want to go to the lookout. <laughs> not, not guaranteed. So there you go, so go for your lives. It's back on for this one, I could have kept it off. This tour, I love this tour guys here, but it's just like... It's a good thing we're not here on the weekend because I hate tourists. It's full of tourists over here. But I don't hate you guys because you pay, you're paying me. Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, for telling me about this. I appreciate it. It's bloody incredible what they got over here. Pretty insane. I don't know if this existed like I thought two weeks ago. So I'm, I'm glad I found out. So apparently there's two sunsets here. So the sun goes down because there's a fake horizon. 25 minutes later, the sky lights up red. So you see two sunsets. That's pretty cool. I can't wait for that. Flies in, my word.
magnificent. Maybe it was aliens. You know, we can't disregard that right now. Who knows? It could be aliens. Great. Where are you from? London, UK. So many damn flights, I can't even take bloody photos without them just getting on me. I, I hate it. Uh, it's so annoying. <laughs> Piss off. Anyway, yeah, um, the tour guy just spoke to me, right? He's a West Ham fan. He lived in East London for 10 years, so he supported West Ham. So he asked me where I was from, so I said UK, you know, from London. He's like, who's your team? I was just like, Arsenal. And he's just, I'm glad you said Arsenal. Because <laughs> he hates Tottenham West Ham fans. They hate Tottenham a lot, so like, <laughs> they, they hate Arsenal too, but they hate Tottenham more. And he said, if, if you said Tottenham, I would have left you here, mate. <laughs> obviously, obviously um, great humour, but yeah, I, I appreciate that, because I hate Tottenham as well, so. Yeah, we started talking about the Premier League, about, you know, uh, how close the title race is. There's two points between the top three. It's going to go right down to the wire. Let's see who's got their bottle. <laughs> uh, hopefully we don't bottle it this year, but we've got tough competition. But it was cool, you know. There's a guy in the other side of the world in Australia and talk about the Premier League. Obviously, he lived in England for 10 years, but still. I would have thought he'd hate us, he'd hate us more now because obviously we took Declan Rice and there's a bit more of a rivalry recently. But uh, yeah, he doesn't seem to hate us. That's a win. I don't, I, I don't even dislike West Ham. Like, sometimes some of their fans are a bit angry about Rice and go over the top. But I don't dislike West Ham, so it's, it's, it's good. It's good. You know? um, he also reminds me a lot of the. Uh, worldwide sort of thing so you would expect to see some fans in Australia but uh, still <laughs> this is pretty fun like the guys don't start talking about you know where you're from what's your team I'm just like yeah this guy knows the vibe of, of the UK <laughs> we're very tribal about our football teams so it's time for the barbecue and there's the telescope there so Uh, yeah, I'm going to... I just said these sausages are kangaroo, these sausages are koala. Can't tell if he's joking. Then he says you're vegetarian over there. Just pushes. That's definitely a joke. The flies will leave in a second. As soon as it gets dark, the flies will go. Then the mats come. They draw the bats. You can see Jupiter and four of its moons from here, so that's pretty cool.
could see Jupiter and four of his moons through a telescope, but it's not dark enough to see through a phone. You can put your phone on it, but it's too dark at the moment. But with my eyes, I could see it. It's like Jupiter's in the middle, and the four moons are either side, like parallel. And there's like 90 moons in there. You can see four of them from Earth, but we saw all four. All four moons in Jupiter. It's pretty cool. No Saturn, though. It's not quite. Uh, apparently, it's not. It's too low or something on the horizon. So you can kind of see it through this camera. I've tried to flip it a few times. That, that white dot is Jupiter. You can't see its moon. You got to. It's, you can't see four of its moons like I can see through the telescope. I can't even see it here. You got to look through the telescope to see the moons because they're that small from here. See, look, it's already out of sight, but it's, it's, I can see it in my eyes. It's just the camera won't pick up on it. There it is. So that's Jupiter. And the four moons will be like, there's two dots there and two dots there through the telescope. Pretty cool. No Saturn and no moon. Our moon isn't here either, which apparently is a good thing because it's unnecessary light. I yeah, just got the answer. Saturn is below the horizon. That's why we can't see it. But at least you can see Jupiter. I mean, you guys can sort of see it. I can definitely see it through the telescope. <laughs> it's better for the, like, I can see it from my eyes. I can see the white dot in the sky. I know that's Jupiter. But four of its moons are visible through the telescope. But it's really cool. Unfortunately, I can't show you. It's not dark enough. Beautiful double sunset there. I asked the guy about AFL because um, he said like where are you exploring and just like I, I told him all the states I'm exploring and I'm just like I also follow AFL so I got another incentive to come here and he's like well cool who did you follow? I said Hawthorne I asked him he's just like he just he doesn't support anyone doesn't like the AFL he's a Kiwi he's my rugby guy um, he doesn't hate the AFL completely he said if he would pick a team he would pick the Eagles or uh, Fremantle he said he used to hate uh, like Premier League soccer but because people took him to a game he started to like that sport, so he wouldn't rule it out. But what he basically said was it doesn't, he doesn't like the tackling. He said in New Zealand, they used to watch the grand final every year at AFL in the late 80s. And it was like really rough fighting. And I, I don't, I have seen clips of that. So I, I understand what he means. He basically feels it's gone soft. He's, he, he even used the term, they've suckered it. <laughs> but yeah, he said like he admires athleticism. He admires their fitness. He says they've got unbelievable fitness. It's just the tackling triggers it off. And as a rugby fan, he's just like, I don't like the tackling. It just, it feels like touching and slapping more than tackling. And he, he always says like, oh, the commentators say, oh my God, what a tackle. And he's just like, it wasn't that good, mate. I'm not that impressed. <laughs> so fair enough, you know, I like hearing different opinions about things. I love the AFL, of course, but uh, it's interesting hearing a Kiwi rugby fan's perspective of it. Because <laughs> he used to watch it as a kid. He used to watch uh, 80s and 90s AFL. But he feels it's gone soft since then. So it's an interesting perspective. Um, but yeah, he said if he was going to pick a team, he'd pick West Coast of Rio because he lives in WA. Great tall guy, though. Love this guy. He's made this day, uh, like this day was already enjoyable. Every activity was great. He makes it more fun with his uh, jokes and banter, so I appreciate that. He knows his stuff. So asked me, like, are you going to see a game of the Optus? So you see, could I see the game of the Optus? I'm just like, unfortunately, no, I want to. I said I'll be back one day, possibly, to watch, because it's still, I still don't watch West Coast Eagles game at, at the Optus. I prefer Freo, but I'd rather watch West Coast than Optus. Maybe Western Derby is the perfect uh, scenario for that, anyway. Also, Swans at the NC, and SCG as well. That's something I can't do this holiday as well. But, um, yeah, as I said, I'm going to Torrey tomorrow, but I haven't been to a game yet. I might be back to see it, though. I'm seeing games in Melbourne. Two things I wish I could cover on this holiday, but unfortunately the timing is just not right. It is what it is. But I'll be back next year for Adelaide at least, because that's Adelaide's over on my list. So I've also not watched Adelaide play or the two WA clubs or Geelong. So I guess if I come for the game around next year, I can fix that. And then I've watched every team. It's funny, I watched 14 of the 18 teams two years ago. <laughs> I visited twice since then. I've not still watched 14 out of 18. <laughs> I've not watched any of these four teams. Geelong got home game in round one, but I won't be in, I won't be available at that time. So even a subscriber emailed me saying I can get you a seat when you come for free to GMHPA. I'm just like I would if I was available to come, but I got other plans that day. So it is what it is. The focus is gone. The front camera has just lost everything. There's a lot of stars in the sky, but you can't really see them through the phone. It's beautiful though.
You don't get this in London. It's full of cloud pollution from flipping trucks driving everywhere. I've just put a bin inside the bus. People on my bus, just be careful walking inside. I just got rid of that light. Okay, yeah, look before. Five dollars a look. No flashes. No flashes. Ruined my eyesight. Yeah, if you, if you want to look at lights, don't ruin anybody else's eyesight. Yeah, it's just out here. Just past the belt. Yeah. Oh, shooting star! See that? Anybody see the shooting star? Yeah. Did you make a wish? Oh, you didn't make a wish. Well, that's a good sign. We don't normally see shooting stars this early in the night. So the blankets are the best place to watch the, st the stars because you're just looking up, you've got a bigger scope of field rather than looking in one particular direction. So is anybody here a Harry Potter fan? Nerds! Excellent. The reason I ask is J.K. Rowling's named about 13 objects in the sky after characters. So this is Bellatrix. So the seventh system is just here. See this little smudge here? A little smudge in the sky out here. It's, well, look at it with the binoculars shortly. This is called the seventh system. One of them is called Moropa, which is Voldemort's mother. Uh, obviously, Sirius for Sirius Black. There's the Draco Galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy. That's about all I've learned from I'm not a nerd. Even though I'm talking about stars. And what you also got to remember is when you're looking at these stars in the sky, this is the only one that's getting a light source from the sun. Jupiter doesn't have a light source, like our planet doesn't have a light source. All the rest are stars, so they're basically an explosion held together. It's a gas explosion held together by gravity. Every one of these stars that you see is basically a sun, and they all have their own planets and their own moons orbiting them. So just like our sun is our star, each one of those is a sun or a star, and they've all got their own planets and moons orbiting it, just like our one. They reckon there's about 400 billion galaxies like our galaxy, the Milky Way, out there. So that means there's got to be trillions of Earth-like stars out there. Try not to look at the light. Ruined your eyesight. Another 15 minutes and so she'll start to get darker. To this lady here, she gives false information. Oh, there's this other girl over here somewhere. and 200 satellites up there. So yeah, Starlink was going across and they were about that far apart and they were just a line of them going across the sky that way and then we saw another line going that way. I really wish you could see this clearly. You can only see it in part. You're seeing like 5% of what could be seen. It is spectacular. Also like how a satellite looks like a moving star. It's just a white dot moving across the sky. It looks pretty cool. Again, can't get it on camera. I also didn't see the shooting star, so I have no idea. I don't see it myself either. I've got to zoom in a certain, that's Jupiter. But there's like a hundred stars up there, you, you can see like two of them. I'm so sorry guys. So you can see about four stars on the, through the camera I think. There's at least a hundred. Just in the picture, I tell you. <laughs> There's a lot, <laughs> but you can see like four. You see what I mean? I don't think I could get the cannon out, but I don't think it make a difference. The planets are because they go through between the two star clusters here. This is called the Golden Gate of the Ecliptic, and all the planets and the moon travel this arc across the sky every night. So if you were to stand here for 24 hours, everything would go past. Unfortunately, some of it would be daylight. You wouldn't see it. But everything takes the um, the loop in 24 hours. Roger gently. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not that gently. You can't see it, but we got binoculars. I, I can see a lot more of the stars through the binoculars. It's a big. Wish I could show you. My apologies. <laughs> Currently lying down on a bench to get a better view of the stars with binoculars.
it is a good idea. But apparently I'm blind because everyone just seen another shooting star. I feel like I'm in my And I'm not seeing it somehow. <laughs> I was looking in this direction. But can not see it. I like it. I missed two shooting stars now. <laughs> Didn't come around that often. Just seen a moving satellite. Don't think that counts. shooting star I missed it again the in position I was watching nope still didn't see There's no lights in the toilets. It's a bad for women, to be honest. At least we can aim somewhere. Well, we're heading back now. This is a great trip. I really, I'm really glad I did this. What a tour. What a tour. I want to sleep the whole way home. Hopefully I can. Apparently not enough people go to the WA. And I feel like they're missing out. That's what the tour guy said. I'm just like, I've mentioned the states I'm going to. He's just like, you're going to WA and Tasmania. That's the two states that no one does. I'm just like... Tasmania kind of makes sense because it's like it's off mainland like maybe it's a bit less popular and it's a bit colder as well normally um but people really don't go to Davia that much I mean it, it is quite isolated I guess compared to like the second most isolated city in the world but still there's so much in Perth I don't know I just found that a bit surprising I feel like I don't know anyway yeah um also this guy this 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 tall guy is a lunatic but like a, a good kind of lunatic so He's like, wear seatbelts, right? He's very strict about, you know, wearing seatbelts on the way back. They're about to leave for the two and a half journey home, right? Two and a half hour journey home. Everyone put your seatbelts seat belts on. I might hit a kangaroo. We, we don't, if I suddenly have to brake, I don't want you flying through the window. Um, so he's just like, yeah, put your seatbelts on. We take off, right? And he slams on the brake, goes, ah! Slams on the brakes straight away. He starts screaming. <laughs> and he's just like, just testing you, just testing you. <laughs> this guy's crazy. <laughs> uh, it's a great, it was a great tour guide though. It was a great tour guide. I love his sense of humor, a bit of a lunatic, bit of a maniac, but uh, <laughs> an absolute madman, as I like to call him uh, back in England. Uh, but he definitely made the tour a lot more fun. And the tour was really fun as it was, like the activities and everything, and also the stargazing at the end. Sorry, I couldn't show you the better of that. Like we saw some great things. I didn't see any shooting stars. Somehow everyone saw three, and I didn't see any of them. Uh, but apart from that, like you see, like there's Elon Musk's. You see satellites moving right in the sky, and it literally looks like stars moving. So like there's a white. You see all these white dots. They're all stars, apart from one that is Jupiter. Um, and then you see a few stars that are moving, and those are satellites, right? And then one of them that'd be like a elon musk apparently has two lines of satellites and they move together in like a line um i don't know how many in total but you see quite a few of them so there was like four satellites in a sequence i think there was more than four in the in the line but we couldn't see the others but there was four satellites in a sequence four different lights just moving together 
and it was a, such a nice sight. I wish I could show you on camera. I thought that was that was pretty cool. So that that is Starlink. Apparently, the Starlink uh, satellites are like really small as well. Um, so it was cool seeing that. Apparently, there's actually two lines. Um, they couldn't see the other one tonight. Just to add to the vlog, I know you couldn't see it on camera, but um, seeing the stars like that, I can really appreciate because in the UK, I live in London especially. You're not seeing stars like that in any night because <laughs> London's just full of pollution. You're just not going to see it that much. Um, even beyond the light pollution, there's worse pollution than that. There are some parts of the UK where it is good, like the south, uh, southwest especially, I think is pretty good. I'm sure there's parts of the west as well, Wales, uh, where uh, and the north, uh, where it's going to be a bit better, a bit clearer. There's even like parts of Scotland where you can see the northern lights. So like, there's parts of the UK where you can see a decent amount of stars, not where I live, but even like, even in those parts of the UK, even if you go like southwest or something, it's nowhere near as good as what you, what we saw tonight. Like Australia, you can really see stars <laughs> and it's not the only place, but it's like, you know, the WA is a great place to see it from. And I'm just like, yeah, this is like, compared to the UK, this, this is so much clearer, so much better. Uh, you can see so many different formations and belts. I just felt like yeah, I can really appreciate that. I didn't even book the tour for that. Like I didn't book the tour to see stars, but I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I booked this tour because seeing the stars tonight was just bloody amazing. Uh, once again, and I've apologized like 24 times. I know it's not my fault, but uh, I wish I could show you guys through the camera, but the camera just won't pick up on it. So it is what it is. It, it is, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. And uh, yeah, I couldn't even get telescope photos because it wasn't the right, uh, it, it, it just wasn't working. The camera wouldn't focus anyway. Um, I should have gone back when it was darker though. I only tried that once. Anyway, yeah, um, back to the vlog. It's almost midnight. I have to be up at like eight in the morning. I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, even before the stargazing, you know, the pinnacles are pretty cool to see and uh, the sandboarding was more fun than I expected. Um, wasn't as scary after the first, half second <laughs> but yeah i sent to my i said i sent this to my mom and she was like is this ice skating i'm just like is, is mom all right has, has she been sleeping well <laughs> ice ice first of all she said ice is clearly sand and second she said skating skating skates are types of shoes i was using a board and i was sitting on it no one sits when they ice skate um I'm just like, I think mum needs some sleep. I think <laughs> I think even she knows what, there's a lot of things she doesn't know what, what it is, but she definitely knows what skating is. That is not skating, mum. That's called boarding. And <laughs> there's definitely not snow in sand. I'm sure there's snow in Australia somewhere, but it's definitely not in Western Australia. My word, <laughs> where there's all deserts and stuff. Anyway, yeah. Um, uh, this is your boy, Davidoff. Please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. And goodbye.